In the years before the First World War, the typographer and sculptor Eric Gill and the graphic designer Edward Johnston moved to Ditchling, a rural village on the Sussex Downs above Brighton. They formed a loose community with other artists and craftspeople. In 1985, a small museum celebrating their work was set up in Ditchling's Victorian Village School. Today, the museum has been updated and revitalised by Adam Richards Architects. It was important that as part of the new South Downs National Park, the architect understood the vernacular architecture, but also was able to add something new, something interesting, uh, something contemporary. We saw an opportunity to make a, by building some new buildings, to make a group of buildings that, that really explored new ways to build in a rural setting. The museum was originally in the old village school and one of its problems was that it, it was reached down a sort of back lane from the village and so part of the solution to that was to turn the museum around to face onto the village green where there was this dis disused 18th century cart lodge. But it's on a lower level, the museum is up on a bank and so the key to unlocking the project was to build new buildings between the two to link it all together. Visitors now approach the museum from the village green. The first building they encounter is the restored 18th century cart lodge where they buy tickets and that then leads into the link building which is really just a, it's a new building which contains the lift and stairs and takes you up into the room that we're in now which is the introductory room which is the sort of first gallery that introduces you to the museum. Behind me is, is the collection store that's sort of hidden from view. And then you go into the main restored renovated village school which contains the main galleries and beyond that there's a, a series of rooms that, are, that include a sort of library room and a sort of education suite and then the offices. Timber played a key role in the restoration of the original buildings and the structure of the new. Original oak trusses have been repaired and exposed. The galleries are floored with oak boards and the walls of the restored Victorian schoolroom are lined with vertical matchboarding to reflect the original cladding. Cross-laminated timber, or CLT, is also used throughout the new buildings. We'll look at CLT and the other timber elements in detail in a moment. But let's start with that listed 18th century cart lodge. The cart lodge had been unused for about 50 years. One of the first things we did was to take the roof off and take the timber cladding off the upper walls. And we then put a ply box around the timber frame to hold it tightly in place and then put the insulation and membranes around the outside of that and then, and then reclad it and put the, put the roof tiles back on and, and steps were taken to make sure that the roof didn't look like a new roof. On the inside, the oak frame was restored and given a sort of brush down, but not much more than that. We took out a central section of floor to, to allow people to see up into the, the fantastic roof structure above. Because the CLT used elsewhere in the building, we used the offcuts to make things like the reception desk, the um, shop display and things like that, because we were keen to sort of thread the old and the new materials together in that, in that space. The artists who came here, whose work is in the collection, were I suppose at the tail end of the arts and crafts movement of the late 19th century and they, one of the things that was very important to them was an idea of truth to materials and that was something that we wanted to pursue in the new buildings and so the CLT offered an opportunity to do that by leaving it visibly exposed within the building. CLT is made from European spruce. Planks of the spruce is uh, laid on the bed and then built up as a sandwich with each layer perpendicular to the one below. Each layer has a glue line between it so you build the panel up three, five, seven layers thick, goes into a hydraulic press under pressure of about six bar until the glues have set, and that effectively makes what we call the motherboard. It was important to us that you could see the grain, that you could see the ends of the CLT to see how it's put together. You can see the different thicknesses of timber that have been chosen, and they're expressed beautifully at the window reveals where you can see the end grains. The actual surface finish of the timber here is what we call an industrial visual grade, created with finger jointed timbers to achieve the heights that they have here in a continuous length. As Adam mentioned, central to the architectural vision was the connection of the existing school buildings to the refurbished cart lodge, which lay at the foot of a small slope. The solution was the creation of two new buildings, a link building with its staircase and disabled lift, and between the link building and the galleries, the introductory room, 
And they're both, in a way, inspired by, the, by traditional local buildings, such as the Cart Lodge, where, where a timber superstructure sits on a, a masonry base. But with these new buildings, we've used a black glazed brick as the masonry base and built a CLT superstructure on them. So the first building, the Link Building, is clad on the outside with handmade tiles, whereas this building that we're in now is, is clad with black zinc. And there's a four metre high window looking out west across the village green, and facing it is the first display of the museum, which is a kind of cabinet of curiosities. From the introductory room, the engineered timber walls peel back like a proscenium arch to reveal the flint outer walls of the old school. One of the great things about CLT is that you could make these fantastic big structural beams out of it. So here we were able to make a big beam that allowed us to open up um, a view both of the old wall of the village school and then through into the main galleries themselves. These had quite a strong character already because they were completely uh, lined with matchboarding. We had to take it out because it was rotten, but we effectively reinstated it, but putting in new insulation, but allowing it to still do its job of helping the building to breathe. And we also used it then to conceal the air conditioning with, within the spaces. So they still have that strong kind of 19th century character, um, but upgraded to, uh, to do the job of being a museum rather than a schoolroom. There's an understanding of the, the National Park, an understanding of the artist's love for materials, and yet it's not just a pastiche of existing buildings, there's an innovative contemporary edge to the building as well. On the one hand, taking this fantastic museum collection, uh, but also taking this great little collection of buildings and adding to that and making a series of spaces that allows that collection to really speak for the, for the first time. So that's been incredibly satisfying. To be able to, to do that from master plan to detail, if you like, requires a great client, but also um, good builders and a, great, and, a, and a great team on the project. <laughs>